Today we will be presenting the myhill narod theorem. The theory was proven by John Myhill and Anil Narod at the University of Chicago in 1958. Some important terms to know are DFA and regular language. As a reminder, a DFA is, at its core, a machine that accepts or rejects after running through a sequence of states. A regular language is one that is recognized by some finite automaton. What this theory proves is a determination of whether our language is regular. To formally state the myhill narod theorem, we first need an important definition. Suppose that we have a language L and two strings X and Y over the alphabet of L. X and Y are said to be indistinguishable if for all strings Z, XZ and YZ are either both members of L or neither are members of L. Conversely, if exactly one of XZ and YZ are in L for some string Z, then X and Y have been distinguished by L. Indistinguishability is an equivalence relation, which means it's reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. Most importantly though, since it's an equivalence relationship, it partitions sigma star into disjoint sets called equivalence classes. This means that there is some number of sets of indistinguishable words over the language L, and all words coming from sigma star uniquely reside in one of these equivalence classes. The formal theorem states that a language is regular if and only if this indistinguishability relation has a finite number of equivalence classes. Additionally, the number of equivalence classes tells us exactly how many states a minimal DFA that recognizes L will have. In other words, the number of equivalence classes tells us the minimal number of states we need for a finite automaton to recognize L. Now I will discuss the difference in how the pumping lemma and the myhill narod theorem prove that a language is non-regular. The pumping lemma involves considering all ways in which an arbitrary string from a language L can be split into three parts x, y, and z and satisfy three properties. The first property being that x, y to the i, z is an element of L for all i greater than or equal to zero. The second property being that the length of y is greater than zero. And the third property being that the length of x concatenated with y is greater than the pumping length. Figure 1 gives a visual representation of the pumping lemma, where any number of additional states may exist between each of the three states and state qi and itself. The purpose of figure 1 is to show that in order to prove that a language is non-regular using the pumping lemma, a specific string in the language must be chosen such that it remains in the language when pumped according to y for every possible way that it can be split into x, y, and z. This can be significantly more challenging than using the myhill narod theorem since the correct string must be chosen in order to achieve a proof by contradiction. On the other hand, figure 2 shows how the myhill narod theorem proves that a language is regular by partitioning the language into a finite number of equivalence classes. Each shade of red represents a different equivalence class, and each blue dot represents a string in the language that belongs to a certain equivalence class where all strings in the same class are indistinguishable from each other. Although both the pumping lemma and the myhill narod theorem are used to determine whether a language is regular, the main distinction between them is that there exist non-regular languages that satisfy the pumping lemma, whereas there does not exist a non-regular language that satisfies the myhill narod theorem. This is because the pumping lemma is based on a conditional statement, whereas the myhill narod theorem is based on a biconditional statement. Therefore, the myhill narod theorem is more powerful since it will always hold for non-regular languages. An example of a non-regular language that satisfies the conditions for the pumping lemma is given below, and the viewer is encouraged to read the paper given on this slide explaining how it satisfies the pumping lemma. We can use the myhill narod theorem to prove that the language L equal to AN to the BN, where N is greater than zero, is not regular. We can show that L has infinitely many equivalence classes by showing that A to the K and A to the I are distingu distinguishable by L whenever K is not equal to I. Thus, for X, where X equals AK and Y is equal to AI, and we let Z equal to BK, then XZ is in the language of L, but YZ is not. Then, for each equivalence class of L, can contain at most one string of the form AI, so there must be infinitely many equivalence classes. This means that L is not regular by the myhill narod theorem. We can also use myhill narod to prove that the language LN of all bit strings, where the nth to last symbol is 1, cannot have a DFA with fewer than 2 to the n states. 
with a proof by contradiction that assuming there's a DFA D with fewer than two N states that recognizes LN, we can proceed with the proof. In the set of all N bit strings, there are two N different N bit strings, but fewer than two N states in D. That's our assumption. By the pigeonhole principle, there must be two strings, let's call them W and W prime, where the computation of D ends in the same state. This means that WZ and W prime Z end in the state, same state for any string Z. If we take our bit representations of W and W prime, where W again does not equal W prime, this means that they differ in at least one location. If we take that location I, call it WI, W prime I, this means that one of those bits is zero and the other is one. If we append the string Z to each of those W and W prime strings, then the nth to last bit in both strings is either zero or either one. Uh, they cannot be both zero, they cannot be both one. However, that means that one of the strings is in L of n, but the other is not. However, given our previous assumption about D and the pigeonhole principle, this means that the computation of D ends on the same state for both strings, which gives the wrong output for one of the strings. Thus, one of the two strings, W or W prime, is a counterexample contradicting the fact that the DFA D with fewer than two end states recognizes L. Uh, this concludes the proof of contradiction that L of n cannot have a D DFA with fewer than two n states. Besides the computational examples that Brian gave, there are many broader applications to the Myhill Neuro Theorem. In general, determining whether a language is regular can be very helpful. Some machine learning models use finite automata, and whether a language is accepted by this shows a lower bound of computational resources. This is just one example of how this theorem can be applied more broadly, but many others exist.